Okay, in this build I'm doing, I'm going to be using the HGLRC A3 V4. I thought I'd do a, little, a quick little video while I'm at it. Okay, um, you get a little pair of buzzer, an XT60. It's a blank sort of XT60, so if you wanted to have this sat on a bit of extension cable, probably be wise getting a different one. Um, for me, some of my battery struts are a bit too short to have this sat like so um, and always worry about batteries getting ejected this ruining the board uh, I picked this up on sale I forget what it was but it was dirt cheap um, it was pretty much as cheap as a decent VTX so I thought I'd give it a shot for a nice tidy build in this low profile purple 215 it has a PDB it's not exactly a proper PDB but uh, it's got two pads either side for the VCC. A uh, little switch on the side to turn your VTX on and off I believe. And you have the little button here for changing the frequency, channel and the power. To configure the OSD on it you need to configure it via MWOSD or Scarab OSD. Uh, I think there's a cable in here that hooks into a standard FTDI adapter. I'll link one down in the description. Uh, suffice to say, it's not configurable by Betaflight, I don't believe. It's an F3 chip on board, so it should be quite capable of half decent gyro and PRD rates. I would go far as to say the F3 chip isn't depreciated like the F1 chip is in Betaflight uh, now that. 3.2 is there or thereabouts. I believe the support for an F1 is now coming to an end. Um, so this will be future proof for a fair old while. Uh, what else to say about this? Um, got up to 8 outputs, uh, signal outputs, piezo buzzer, um, RSSI input. Um, here's your cam camera inputs. Uh, you've got 5 volt ground, 3.3, uh, there's a RX, another 5 volt on a ground. Uh, you've got UARTs here. And this would be your PWM. You've got your signals here. Uh, for example, S1, S2, S3, S4, you've got 5, 6, 7 and 8. Oh, 7 and 8 over here. Your LEDs here as well. The only other thing you get in the box, well, you get your channels and frequencies on the back. Uh, 40 channel. 8 channels, 5 frequencies. Uh, immersion RC, boss cam, sky zone, whatever they are. Uh, little UFL, big tail. Some nylon standoffs. This is your FTDI. That's the 1.25 millimeter connector for this, the board side, and it's already broken out to the correct pins, I believe, on the FTDI. So there's no uh, messing about. Just follow the um, color code I expect. And this would be for traditional PWM input or PPM perhaps, um, depending if you're still using that. Uh, maybe using an S-Bus on here, I'm going to be putting into a UART and configure it as a serial RX. Um, these wires aren't silicone, they're PVC. I'll link the video to the craft where this is going on, or a flight or something. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a very, very nice build out of this, hopefully. Um, for its price, it can't go wrong. So this is going on the end of the HGLRC F3 V4 board uh, video. I have put silicone cable to power it. It's in here. I flushed it with Beta Flight 3.2. I'll link to the video where it just blew my mind. What can I say about the board? I'd use another one in a heartbeat. Uh, can't go wrong. The only awkward thing about it is the OSD. 
Um, I haven't even plugged it in to configure it by FTTI, but I have gone in through the stick command. I think it's a throttle mid your right and pitch forward to access the OSD. And you can turn on and off everything and adjust the VBAT scaling. Um, so if you need to, that's how I did it and whittle it down to the raw voltage flight time and um, mode that I wanted displayed on my uh, goggles. Yeah, brilliant. I'm going to put 4S through it, just been running on 3S for now. I don't have any qualms with it. It is a really, really nice little board, as you see. It's just the flight controller with the VTX on it and a 4 in 1 20 amp ESC on there. I did have to buy a SMA pigtail, uh, as I don't use RPSMA. That's a minor thing. Um, yeah, all good. Great frame, great board, great fun. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the link videos. Hey!